So, thank you for joining. And um, my name is Tanya Mather. And first of all, I would just like to thank Ellie. Thank you, Ellie, so much for, for giving me this opportunity. And um, yeah, um, my, I'm a wellness coach. I'm a master wellness coach. So I focus mainly on stress management. And one of the things that I decided to do was to share a little bit considering the circumstances that we're in at the moment where so many of us are stuck at home and really, you know, stress is something that is not good for our immune system. So in this um, hour that we've got together, it's going to be participatory as well. So I'd like you to just share your information. So there's a chat box below. If you've never used Zoom before, down at the below, you can find the chat box and you can just share some information. And um, in this discussion, what I'm going to be talking about is looking, first of all, at stress. Okay. So stress is something how it affects our physiology, which is our bodies. It affects our psychology and it affects our minds and it also affects our immunity. And I think given the circumstances at the moment, what is really important is considering that the coronavirus and the moments that we're living in, but it's not only for this moment in time, I think it's in general, is to ensure that we have a good immune system. So what, what happens? Stress. Our, our body is, there's good stress and there's bad stress. And as I can see by the image here, we, when we're faced with some kind of threat, and I like to say it's a threat that is real or imaginary, what happens is that we either fight, okay? So the response is either to fight, flight, which means we get out, or else we land up in that middle stage when there's uncertainty, there's paralysis, and you just freeze. And it's this state that our body hits into a state where our our body will start producing cortisol and, um, and um, adrenaline. And the reason is because it will help us to get away. So traditionally there'd be a threat, okay? And some, a lion would come or something like that. And our body would just, our system would shut down to get us out of a dangerous situation. So what's happening with the common stress that we have at the moment, which is, it's like a little bit like a torture so it's a little bit every day and here the stress our body is continually being producing the stress hormones which is cortisol and adrenaline but it's not being used in a way where in, in, in the correct way. So what are the negative effects of this is that obviously it's in, in having a serious effect on our immune system. It's also having a serious effect on um, our state of being and everything like that. So just to have a look, I want to see what, what it is to understand what we can control. Because when we understand that in stress, stress is, it can be as humans, we can perceive the stress as something real or something that's not real. So it just can be in our imagination. So when we look at what we can control, what is in our control? What can we control? Okay. And I'd like to see if you want to just maybe type in the chat box and see if there's anything that you would like to, um, to say, what it is that you think that you can control and what is completely out of your control. So within our control, we have, and there's, we have certain influence. So in our sphere, there's an influence and then there's very little or no control whatsoever. So what happens with this? The control that we have, that I believe, is we can control how we react to situations and we can control our breath. Okay, so later on we're going to be doing a practice round to see um, the breath and how we can use our breath um, to um, control our stress, okay, and control, help us in our, in our reactions. So I think something that, that I wanted to mention in this call today is um, the difference between sympathy and empathy, because one of the things I've been talking um, online to a lot of friends and really beautifully, because finding a lot of other people who um, have, haven't be, been in contact with them for a long time. And one of the friends that I was talking to, she was, she was really sort of getting upset about all the media and everything like that. And what, what was going on is that, she's really sympathizing with everybody, okay? So what it means is that you're getting into that energy center of that person. You're being dragged in, as the image says. Whereas if you're in empathy, you are for coming from a better and a stronger place and you can still help others, okay? And then if apathy is just, you couldn't care. You couldn't care less. So it's really understanding which of these places to be in and not to fall in the place of sympathy. So for example, she was telling me how she was watching these people in the old age homes and how they were, you know, and she was just feeling and she got all sad and depressed because of that. 
So that's sympathy. You're sympathizing with those people. Whereas if you're with empathy, I'm going to tell you with a, with a breath work that we're going to do later, how we can use through the heart centered awareness and giving love and giving some beautiful, wonderful energy to others. So we're going to look at here the difference between fear and love. Essentially, there's two states of being, okay? There's a being of in the state of fear or you're being in the state of love. And when you're in the state of fear, there's uncertainty, there's you're in, you're maybe you're angry, you're frustrated, you are feeling uncertain about the future. And that is your, that's your energy sphere when you're in fear. And as the diagram clearly indicates, it's a very small fear. You start getting contracted. Your physical body will actually start closing in. People who are depressed, their heads are down. Whereas if you open up and just by physically opening up your chest, you might might even notice how if you open up your chest at the moment you open up and your whole physiology and you lift up your chin you feel much better and your heart will open so when we're connected to our center of love which is in our heart center those are the those are the emotions that we're going to try and foment much more in these times of crisis which is fomenting compassion appreciation gratitude empathy all of these kind of really there's different kinds of there's a very interesting app on online at the moment and it's called you, if you buy it so you don't really have to but it's about every um emotion is like a planet so you can jump from emotion to emotion it's like being on a planet and you can either be in the planet hate <laughs> but how long you stay in that planet for because sometimes you might get angry and you might hop onto planet angry and you you there's a certain moment where you might need to get angry so you get angry but how long are you going to stay on that planet? So jump back onto planet love or jump back onto planet appreciation. When we're just doing anything in our homes at the moment, we can start really appreciating um, what we can do. So um, I think what happens is in this image I pulled up because it's really beautiful. You know, there's a chain around that heart and it's, you know, there's that loneliness and there's that, the, you know, how in the, in the canals of Venice and so on that there, there's nobody there. And you can see how, are, are you locked? Is your heart locked? And I would like to give you this opportunity in this next moment to um, do a heart opening exercise. And in the meantime, I just wanted to check to see if there's anybody who has any um, comments or any questions at the moment. So Marjan says the outside world, it's out, we're, it's out of control, the outside world, exactly. Inside home is in control. Exactly. So it's what really what's inside of us and what's in our, our own space that we can control. So what I'd like you to do at the moment is to just put down whatever it is that you have, make sure that your phones are off, that we're not going to be disturbed. And I just want to give you a, an experience of what it's like to experience our energy going out and when we expand our energy and we can feel what's going out on around us and a time when we can move in and come into it and then feel even both. And it really, it's a heart-centered awareness exercise. So put down whatever it is that you've got at the moment going on and just maybe become aware. You can close your eyes and become aware of where your body is situated on the ground or you're situ situate, situated on a chair. Your feet are on the ground. And you might notice some sounds around you. And what's important in this exercise is to notice those sounds without any judgment, with neutrality. So there might be a car going past. There might be a car going past. And just try and listen to it as the sound and not, oh, there's a car going past. So start to learn to identify sounds and sensations without the judgment. So just from a child's perspective, from an innocence of mind, and just become aware of those outside noises, or maybe there's a lack of noise. Oh, become aware of that as well. Your mind might start to wander and the ideas or thoughts might come in and that's okay. 
that's normal. Just observe them and come back to these sensations of whatever it is that you can hear around you. And then what I'd like you to do is just to come in and notice maybe your skin, if there's any cool or warm sensation around you. And then come inward and notice within your body if you can notice any kind of maybe a tingling sensation. And again, without judgment. So here it's just observing, oh, there's a tingling or maybe it's, there's an itchiness or something and just observe it without thinking what it might be or what it might not be from a place of neutrality. And even if thoughts come along, just allow them to come and allow them to go just as much as they came and as much as they left. And I want you to start focusing now on your breathing and notice what it is, the sensation of breathing. And what I mean by this, I mean that, that your body as you inhale, it will expand. And as you exhale, the body will come in and contract. So observe that sensation of breathing. And breathe in from the heart center. So as within each inhalation that we take in, we breathe it in from our heart center. As though we were breathing in the love and the light, and as we exhale, we just let go of perhaps any tension that we might find in the body, or just let go of a thought, whatever it is that isn't serving you at this moment, just let it go. As we exhale, connect with a deep exhalation, and then as you breathe in, breathe in that feeling from your heart. And as you breathe in with your heart and your body expands, notice that expansion. And as you contract through the exhalation, just let go. Notice the body relaxing. So as we come, we've become very centered, our focused attention towards our breathing, Continue staying present with your breath. And at the same time, your awareness starts to expand again. So you still stay connected with the breath. And as it comes in, notice it expansion. And your attention will start to expand. And you might start to notice those outside noises and sounds that may incorporate into your sphere of awareness. And just allow the moment to be as it is. And you can take a nice deep breath and just wriggle your toes and your hands. And, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes and come back to this moment. And I would just like to maybe ask any of you if you have any comments, if you want to have the microphone and just share your experience um, with this. And this is something that you see it's taken us probably less than five minutes and it's a great way to self-regulate. And I think that this is something that you can do in the morning when you wake up in the morning or any time of the day when you're feeling intention, you can just go off and do this, okay? Does anybody have any questions? Any comments? No? You can raise your hands and I can open up the microphone. Because I don't want you just sitting there and you could, if you want to, can, we can participate. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next screen. 
So as a wellness coach, um, we look at the 360 wellness wheel. And this is something that I would like to just bring in of wellness habits that you can do at this time. Um, we look at our food, okay? What is it that we're eating? And it's really important at this time to avoid sugars and processed starches because what happens is that it produces more, more sugar in the body and that will um, make a com com it will compromise our immune system. Okay. Um, so make sure that you're eating healthy, you're drinking lots of water. So there's the water air element there, that you're in the water. I like what I like to do is when I'm in the shower, I pretend that I just, or I actually imagine that, that the water that is coming is coming straight from a river. And it's that energy from the river, because remember that the mind and imagination, the, the mind doesn't distinguish between what is imaginary and what is real. So when we get into our meditations and we start thinking, even though we can't see a beautiful green pasture with flowers, what we can do is we can visualize that or we can even look on our screen. You know, sometimes they've got these, these, um, these apps where you can put on your screen or your TV screen, they can put a, a fireplace and then you put the fireplace on and there you are, you've got your little fireplace and they've got the crackling sounds and everything. Rest, okay? Rest is really important. Make sure that you're getting your good eight hours sleep. If you're having struggling with sleep, let me know. I've got some fantastic on my website. I've got some recommendations. I wrote a blog about it. Air, okay, we're stuck in our houses and we think we can't breathe air. Open the window, allow the, the air freshen, bring fresh air in. And then we've got our body. Are we moving? It's really, really important that we're moving. Okay, so all of these things have got different layers. You can see that relationships, careers, spirituality, and all of these have got different layers. So there's different spiritual layers. And this is what we look at in, well, in our wellness coaching. And um, here, is a sign that is a Chinese sign and it says it's a uh, it's crisis. And crisis in the Chinese language, one is danger, okay? But there's also another is opportunity, okay? So what opportunities can you find in these moments of crisis? There are dangers. Yes, there's a danger of maybe contracting the, the virus or maybe there's a danger of whatever it is. But when we are in this fear state, I've got a great little exercise that um, I can help you, that will help you if you've got fear and you're feeling the danger and you're getting into those stress hormones is, um, it's an exercise that you do for 15 minutes a day. And you can do it as many times as you want. What you do is you get a pen and paper and you write down your fears. Now, there's two um, kind of rules that, um, that, that when you're doing this, one of them is when you're writing things down, it's like, okay, I'm, I, I fear getting the virus. And it's a full stop. I fear that if I get the virus, I might die. If I die, my family will, will miss me. Those kind of things. Not as a remun remuneration. What? No, that's rumination that's the word i'm looking for it's not a rumination so if i get to catch the virus then i'm going to die and then this is going to happen and then this is going to happen so it can't be like that it's just one sentence at a time and then what's really important is to make sure that it's for 15 minutes so if you run out of things to say recycle the things and you do it again from the beginning okay so put your timer on do it and that what what will happen what this does is that it really makes your fears valid and true and you can grab onto them and what you can also do is um give a time of the day when you are just dedicating to those fears because there is it's a moment of fear but it's a place they've got a place in your day so that's really helpful and then this other one it's like what can you do there's happy hormones okay so what can you do to bring up your energy Dopamine is the happy hormone, okay? Doing something, you know, when you've done a good job at something and then you feel good about it. There's dopamine there. There's serotonin, which is a great hormone because you get exercise, you need your exercise. There's also the oxytocin, which is the love hormone. And the love hormone, so we we're just discussing whether it's hugging the people that you're with or maybe even giving yourself or giving yourself a nice little hug. I mean, it really helps if you're on your own. There's also estrogen. Estrogen is produced in, the, in, the, in women, primarily in women, and stress management is very, very helpful. So your breathing, exercise, and so on. And then there's also progesterone, that, which is produced um, as a happy hormone, and this is done by self-care and healthy eating. 
Okay, so I want to, you to put in the chat box, what is it that you're doing? Okay, and what is it that you're doing at the moment? Because, you know, we, we're stuck at home and I want to know what you're doing. So put in the chat box and share, share so that we can see what you guys are doing out there. If you'd like to share. If anybody wants the microphone, just put up your hand and you can, you can, we can, you can tell us. Maybe you've got some wonderful ideas and share. Does anybody want to share? Yeah. I'm going to unmute you. Hi. Hi. Em. Hi, Didi. Didi. How are you, Tanya? I'm very well in yourself. Thank you. I am fine. Um, hi, everyone. Yeah, I mean, I am mostly doing this second one, serotonin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I keep moving. I do my own practice and then I do these uh, online yoga classes. Yeah. So like uh, also every day um, I have to organize, do my lesson planning, do this, that. Um, it's uh, really uh, actually shaping all my days since we have the, this lockdown. Yeah. Uh, so I can just uh, suggest uh, that to, to keep moving exercising i mean i don't know in, inside their house what people they can do if you have a garden you can just go out and then walk up and down uh you can do some yoga breathing exercises um any kind of whatever uh, that's what i do yeah i do practice yoga and that's uh and also of course the um love hormone oxytocin so right now, you know, as we do the physical um, distancing <laughs> and um, so we did what we do. We just hug our cats. <laughs> yeah. That's right. If you've got a cat, then you can. Yeah, we have three of them. Yeah. I mean, just I can only share my own um, experience. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, that's uh, what I am doing. And if you yeah um, just uh, keep moving my my solution is just keep moving and keep going yeah and that's, uh, that makes me keep going i think keeping my spirit that and i try to keep away from the the horrible videos sometimes yeah running around yeah because that is these are things we already know we don't need to see sometimes you know and uh, i try to keep distance myself i just literally pick the things that I think I will, I want to believe. Exactly. And that's how I created maybe myself a little bubble here, but I rather to stay like that for my own uh, well-being. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And Didem, you, you bring up such a, such a valid point because, um, you know, it's our attention what we're going to experience is where our attention, where our attention goes, our energy flows. So if we're going to spend our whole day with the TV on, watching TV, watching the news, what, listening to horror things, that is where our energy is going to go to. Okay, that is what we're going to connect with as far as our, 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 our spiritual and our energetic connection with this is going to go towards that. So listen to beautiful music yeah i hear that um jenna is she's got the cats around so you don't feel so lonely that's great great and marjan you're working on your youtube channel and you're following the web webinars from the costa woman i know they're all wonderful aren't they and to do yoga every day put makeup on ah to look after your appearance and health i know i've got a post i've got a message from a friend of mine so she she said she just got dressed up today um just to be around the house <laughs> which is great yeah Anybody else sharing what you're doing? You want the microphone and share? You can put your hands up. Me? Yes? Nobody? All right. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to... <clears throat> Tomorrow is World Happiness Day, okay? And I am going to make a challenge. I'm going to challenge you so that you can say have a world happiness day if you can manage to have one full day of being happy what is it that you're going to do maybe you can write it down and say i'm going to be happy this is what makes me happy and um 
just say this is and this is what I'm going to do it because I think I really think that this is an opportunity for us to to um, to go within as Arlena says it's a great time to go within and to find out really is what we've been doing until now serving us and if not what is it that you can do okay there's a wonderful um thing that if you want to i'll share this um a facebook page that i've got which is called the chronicles of shutdown i'm sharing a lot of information there i'm also offering free online coaching sessions and you can also download the, the my five minute meditation that comes from my website as you can see below and in this um in the in this 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 um in the facebook group i put up a, something up that was a um your passion test okay to find out your passion test and whilst i was you know getting information about finding out what i could do for this um i came across my passion test which i did in 2016 and i was so amazed because almost everything that i wrote that i wanted to do and it's and because it's in a present tense it's not we're not looking at our past our past is behind us we're looking forward and where do we want to go let's keep our vision forward and looking future to where our future is and where do we want to move towards and this passion test is really helpful because it does that and i was completely amazed and one of the things that i just wanted to share with all of you is that the reason why I come about this and just a bit of a personal I was diagnosed with breast cancer uh, four or five years ago and um, and I just took it on to change my life and to really move forward and it's quite quite incredible to see that the other day I was having a conversation with a friend of mine and she works for the Spanish police and she said oh you know you need to be really careful because you are um, you know, you're, you're susceptible, you know, because your immune system's com compromised. And I looked at her and it was like, what? It was like, because for me, that is, that was me. That was me when I was fighting with everybody. That was me when I was in those fear hormones. That was me when I was angry. That was me in those days, but it's not the me today. The me today vibrates in a completely different way than it did in those days. And one of the things that I've learned, and I've shared this in the Facebook group is um, two of my favorite people that I work with, or at least I follow. One of them is Bruce Lipton. And what Bruce Lipton is, he wrote a book called The Honeymoon Effect. What he does is he says, when you, he's a biologist, okay? And he wrote another book called The Biology of Belief, which is absolutely fantastic. And I've shared one of his talks, which is mind blowing. Okay, you have to listen to that. It's a podcast on there. And what happens is that he wrote this book called The Honeymoon Effect. And you know, when you're in a honeymoon or you're in love and you've got these, the love hormones and everything looks beautiful and nothing can disturb you. What he encourages us to do is to live continually in that state of being. Okay, which is really fantastic. And, and somebody else I've attended a lot of his workshops is Dr. Joe Dispenza. And he's got some fantastic, a lot of, a lot of stuff online. And this is one of the things that we can find a huge amount of information that is really positive, that is going to help us in these challenging times to make sure that they are opportunities and they're not, it's not in the danger. So... Marjan, she's quite happy by herself and um, I'm quite busy the whole time, whole day. Time flies. I love listening to classical music and being with my dog. You see, and that's simple and that's simple and that simplicity is absolutely beautiful. So does anybody have any questions? No? You are a quiet bunch. No. <laughs> Ali, do you have anything to say? I just want to say that last, last minute before I actually finish up, and you know the word corona means crown. And so I'm just wondering if during this time, are we going to be looking at this as the corona, which is the crown of the death? Um, or are we going to be looking at it in this way, okay, which is this beautiful, beautiful angel. She's wearing her crown. She's got stars in her hand, she's got light, she's smiling, and this is what I think that if in this moment in time, in this crisis time that we're living in, if we can embody this feeling of, um, yeah, just really bringing light into the world, I think it's a huge opportunity for change. Um, and the call can be opened up because we were scheduled for an hour, but I went much faster than I expected. <laughs> 
Should we just open it up um, and see if anybody wants to say anything? Ali, I know that you've got to rush off because you've got a, a, a session coming up shortly. And I'm not sure if I'm the one that needs to unmute everyone. Can I mute everyone? <laughs>